What's up, what's up? Happy Monday. Blessings to everybody. Peace and love and prosperity. Welcome to Rap Geek. Thanks for stopping by to get the latest and the greatest trending news. If this is your first time, you're invited to hit that subscribe and that notification bell. That way you get all the juicy info as soon as it drops. Let's dive into some conversation. Last week, Cardi B gave birth to her third child with Offset. The Bongos performer filed for divorce right before announcing their pregnancy. Regardless, the co-parents still appear to be on good terms. She even defended Offset amid rumors that he wasn't supportive enough last month, clarifying that he's a major part of the kids' lives and has even helped out a lot when it comes to her career. Now she's taken to social media to unveil some heartwarming footage of their daughter's arrival. In the footage, both she and Offset are seen holding their daughter. Cardi is even shown sharing the exciting news with her six-year-old daughter, Culture, who assured her she was on her way to meet her new sister. Man, that's beautiful. But of course, fans are flooding her comment section with congratulations and words of support. Oh my God! Culture wanting to be there for mommy is so heartwarming. Mommy, I'm gonna come there, okay? Had me in tears, one TikTok user writes. Congratulations, Cardi. You're such a good mother. Heart emojis. Hope this new baby brings you nothing but joy and happiness, another says. Cardi B certainly has a lot on her plate at the moment, considering her brand new little one. She's not wasting any time or getting back to rapping. Last week, she hopped on Twitter X. Them Twitter fingers was to announce Rap Geek was going to start getting serious about finishing her upcoming sophomore album. Now it's crunch time. Album emoji on my kid, she declared. The project doesn't have an official title yet or a release date, but it's expected to drop sometime this year. But what do you think about Cardi B unveiling new footage from the birth of her third child with Offset? Man, that's a beautiful thing. Hopefully that little bundle of joy can rekindle the love between Cardi B and Offset and they can stay a family. But do me a favor, drop your thoughts in the comment section and we're on to the next story. According to Wallow, Young Thug was making $1 million per show. During a recent appearance on the Joe Budden podcast, Wallow recalled some valuable advice he once gave Young Thug before he was sent to prison. According to him, the rapper had showed him a $1 million wire from Rolling Loud for one performance when they met for an interview in 2021. Young Thug also showed up with a huge crew, prompting Wallow to impart some of his wisdom on Young Thug. I'm looking at him like, yo, you know what that means? You know who you are? You're responsible for everybody in the effing room. You gotta be on point. All the artists will tell you, I said this, Dirk, Young Thug, everybody. I'll be like, why you got all these ninjas with you, bruh? He went on, also emphasizing the fact that his advice was genuine and comes from experience. Wallow recalled considering the cost of all the plane tickets, hotels, gear, meals, and more for everyone there. Regardless, he said none of them were bringing anything to the table or willing to help out where it was needed. But on top of this, he pointed out that they were a pure liability. Clearly, that was the last young thug needed to worry about at that point in his career. Wallow also claimed that if he were young thug's manager, the only people around would be a cameraman, his DJ, security, and an assistant to make sure everything ran smoothly. But what do you think about Wallow making these claims and about the million dollars rolling loud shot young thug before he ended up going to prison? Hey, drop your thoughts and we're on to the next story. Your boy Diddy threatened to slit J. Cole's throat over Kendrick Lamar. TDE's punch appears to allege. Man, what? During his recent appearance on the R&B Money podcast, TDE's punch was asked to tell a wild story, but omit the names of anyone involved. It seems as though he opted to reflect on Diddy and J. Cole's fight at the BMA's after party in 2013. 
Allegedly, Diddy wasn't happy with Kendrick's control verse and J. Cole was defending him. In a post from the podcast, Punch recalls hitting a club in New York City when two people began to argue over a big, big song. Rap Geek. These men are speculated to be J. Cole and Diddy. According to him, the VIP section they were in was like, front row of the Grammys, meaning there were plenty of high profile people around. The argument escalated when one of them said they cut the other's throat with a bottle if they were to disrespect them again. The one who was threatened threw a punch, resulting in a huge scuffle. It's rumored that Diddy was the one to make the bottle threat, whereas J. Cole was the one to throw them hands. Pew, 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 pew. Man, I know it's a lot of crazy Diddy stories and it seems like only more and more are coming out. Punch claims that a man who was friends with one of the celebrity onlookers got involved and started beating up J. Cole. This is rumored to be Jay-Z's close friend, Emery Jones. Eventually, Jones allegedly realized that he was beating up J. Cole, who was signed to Rock Nation. Rap Geek, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Thanks. He didn't have his glasses on and immediately felt guilty when he realized what happened. But of course, it's not confirmed that this is the altercation Punch was referring to though. So take it with a grain of salt. And it's also not confirmed that the altercation played out exactly this way. So there's more legend out there. But the ratio from celebrity to regular person was like 70 to 30 maybe. Every section was full of celebrities, Punch added. But what do you think about Punch, man? Spilling this story right here. Do you feel like it's all true? Or do you feel like, hey, some things may have been exaggerated? But either way, we're on to the next story. Glorilla used Boosie Badass's iconic single, Wipe Me Down, for a new song that she teased on social media earlier this week. In a reworking of the track, she raps about being from Memphis, shouts out CMG, and more. The snippet has fans on social media going crazy. In the comment section of the post from the Neighborhood Talk, one user wrote, if she keeps making music like that, she will last a very long time. Glow makes club bangers for sure. She's different and she's herself. I'm ready to hear the album. Others complain about the current prevalence of sampling. One user argued, like I really love Big Glow. But can we normalize this generation, creating some new beats and material for the next generation to idolize? It seems like all everybody is doing is sampling and not being original. Like that's what made Missy, Busta, Aaliyah, etc. iconic. Rap Geek. Back in 2023, Boosie revealed that he named his dog after the up and coming rapper. I named my dog Glorilla. Big Glow. Old Glorilla, man. He said in a video from the time, and hey, Big Glow ended up responding by naming her pet Lizard after the Louisiana legend. Man, you can't make this up. They, hey man, they too funny on that. Say hey to my new addition, she told her fans in a video at the time while showing off her pet Lizard. Hey Boosie. Despite the hype around the new snippet, Glow recently faced backlash for previewing another song on social media. Fans have been upset about her use of the R word in that track. Hey, what's up, man? Do y'all think Glorilla and Boosie should just make a song together? Do me a favor, drop your thoughts in the comment section, and we're on to the next one. Stephen A. Smith became the latest sports commentator and celebrity to give his two cents on the Shannon Sharp Instagram Live scandal. Shannon Sharp was having sex, he remarked on his show. That's what he was doing, okay? He was getting it in. Oak was getting in that work. It's just that it wasn't for everybody to know. You know he was on Instagram Live and didn't know. Although no video was seen, we heard quite a bit. He thought his stuff was hacked. And then obviously, he came out and told the truth of what transpired. From that point forward, you've had a lot of people speculating as to whether or not he was gonna get fired. Was he gonna get suspended, etc., etc. Stephen A. Smith continued, again, he works on First Tape. I'm the executive producer for First Tape. If something was gonna happen to him with regards to ESPN, I'd be one of the first to know. And let me be the first to say that Shannon Sharp committed no crime. It wasn't some sex tape that he meant for everybody to hear. That's not how he rolls. 
I got to know him personally. That's not who he is. That's not how he rolls again, okay? So let me get that out of the way first. And if something had happened where he was going to be in a world of trouble, I would have fought like hell to make sure that nothing came of it. Stephen A. Smith went on. Because again, there's no video and he was living his private life and it was a mistake. And if you know anything about Shannon, trust and believe me, it was a mistake. Because not only is he incredibly private, he's incredibly clueless when it comes to using social media. He has a team that does that for him. The nerve of people out there were trying to act like he did something wrong. Two consenting adults were getting it in yesterday morning. You know, uncle's getting at work. So what's the problem? What's the problem? I can't believe why people were trying to act like, yo, he did something wrong. They're trying to say sex tape. Sex tape, nah. No, you didn't even see nothing. It was audio. And if you didn't see it, you don't see it. And you can't really believe it. Hey, technology is crazy. But a word of advice to Shannon Sharp. Put a piece of tape over your camera until you get a hold of things. Yeah, and we're on to the next story. Donald Trump is safe and unharmed after gunshots were fired near him at Trump International Golf Club in West Palm Beach, Florida. Around 2 p.m. on Sunday, he had been walking between the fifth and sixth holes when the shots were fired. Fox News is reporting that the Secret Service members opened fire after spotting a man with a AK-47. That's right, he had a stick in the nearby bushes. Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office spokesperson Terry Barbera says a person of interest is already in police custody. The former president is safe. We will have more details soon. Secret Service spokesman Anthony Guglielmi said, Trump also reportedly told Fox News host Brett Baer, tell everybody I'm fine and the Secret Service did a great job. The FBI has confirmed the organization is investigating what appears to be an assassination attempt of the former president Donald Trump, according to CNN. The White House also put out a statement on the shooting. The president and the vice president have been briefed about the security incident at the Trump International Golf Course where former President Trump was golfing. They are relieved to know that he is safe. They will be updated by their team, they wrote. A few hours after the incident, Trump addressed the situation in an email to his supporters. There were gunshots in my vicinity, but before rumors start spiraling out of control, I wanted you to hear this first. I am safe and well, he wrote. Nothing will slow me down. I will never surrender. I will always love you for supporting me. Rapty. The latest assassination attempt comes after another man shot at Trump during a rally in Butler, Pennsylvania in July. But be on the lookout for further updates on Donald Trump, the 2024 election, and this whole debacle. And we're on to the next story. Man, this is a big one and this is a sad one right here. R.I.P. to the Jackson 5 guitarist. The music world has suffered yet another tragedy this year as Tito Jackson has reportedly passed away at 70 years of age. Per E.T., authorities have identified no cause of death at this time. Although longtime family and friend Steve Manning suggests to the publication that he may have had a heart attack while on a road trip from New Mexico to Oklahoma. The Indiana native played guitar for his family's legendary group, the Jackson Five and the Jacksons, while he initially did not record for them due to label constraints. He eventually stood up against the obstacles and laid a foundational groundwork for the group. Reactions, tributes, and sympathies quickly emerged online upon news of this loss, including from Tito Jackson's sons. We are shocked Sad and heartbroken, 3T, Taj, Terrell, and TJ tweeted in the wee hours of Monday, September the 16th, after the news broke. Our father, Tito Jackson, was an incredible man who cared about everyone and their well-being. Please remember to do what our father always preached, love one another. We love you, Pops, and we will forever miss you. This is still a developing story, so we'll have to see what other information emerges in the near future surrounding Tito Jackson's heartbreaking loss. In the meantime, 
fans are remembering his key role in the Jackson family's artistic breakthrough. It was only after Tito was caught playing his father's Joe guitar after breaking a string that the patriarch convinced his sons to form a band. That was the day the legend began. If not for that moment, then perhaps we wouldn't have witnessed history play out in the way that it did. After their amateur night victory at the Apollo Theater, August of 1967, the rest is history. Sadly, this is not the first Jackson to transition to another plane, and he will not be the last. But nevertheless, Tito Jackson is far more than his absence. Many fans remembered him on social media for his quiet demeanor, his love of swing, his iconic solos and performances over the year, and his constant dedication to his family. Just under a week before his passing, Tito and his brothers Jackie and Marlon visited a memorial site to their brother Michael in Munich. Tito continued to perform up until his death. Rest in peace, Tito Jackson from the legendary Jackson's family. Naomi Campbell and Law Roach are being accused of throwing shade at Rihanna after taking part in the viral demure trend on social media. In a post on Instagram, Roach says to his followers, we don't go to shows like the other girls. We don't come with our tatas out or our chichis out. Very demure, which prompted Campbell to add, very mindful, we don't give too much. It's not about showing yourself, it's about showing the clothes. Fans in the comment section quickly interpreted the remarks as being meant to disrespect Rihanna. I feel like this is a Rihanna shade and I hope she does not respond. This is peasant behavior one user wrote. Another added, if y'all mad she ignored y'all, just say that. That fan was referencing an incident that occurred at the Alea Fashion Show. Rihanna stopped by to say hello to former British editor-in-chief Edward Enipo, who sat next to Naomi Campbell and wrote. Despite doing so, she didn't bother to speak to either of them. It was thick in the air. Campbell previously shot down the idea of having an issue with Rihanna during an appearance on Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen. Everything's fine, she said. Rap geek. I'm an actress now, Andy. I don't have beef, especially with black women. The support is powerful. We are all out here doing the same thing, and we all have the same struggle. Hey, that's very true. We do all have the same struggles at different times in different places. But what do you think about this whole situation here? Are they shading Rihanna? Hey, let me know in the comment section below. Stay tuned to Rap Geek. Like, share, and subscribe for all the latest updates on this unfolding saga and more. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.